speaking of down, okay. we got on the phone Neil Bennington, Woo. the friend of the Woo. Comedy Point, who just popped his cherry in the comedy world and oh, tried it for wow. the safe. <laughs> Congratulations. I, thank you. I did, and I'm very happy. I lasted longer than three minutes, so... That's you know, I did pop my chair. There oh, you go. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And for everybody who's listening, uh, Neil Bennington, Neil B, he's actually one of the, the friends of the Comedy Point. He's now going to be a regular on our show. He called in. He now He's a celebrity blogger. He was at the Out um, Music Awards last time he called in. And uh, last week you performed at, uh, the, uh, the, where did you perform at? Eastville? And now you're performing at uh, New York Comedy Club? I performed at New York Comedy Club, and it was great. There was an amazing turnout, and, it, you know, I wasn't sure again if I – you know that feeling where you're not sure if you're going to bomb or not the first right. time. And uh, it was great, and I got invited back again in February, so it was awesome. Woo. Wait, what show did you perform at? We might have been on the same show, and I didn't realize. <laughs> but it, it was uh, the New York Comedy Club. What time? On at nine o'clock. No, oh. no, no. He but you performed on Wednesday, didn't you? Oh, Neil? Wednesday. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. No, it, well, you know what's, what's you know what's funny about that is Neil actually sent me a video of him performing his material in front of the computer, in front, and he was you know wanted to get feedback. But Neil, you actually had. Like, he, he sent out, like, moments where he thinks he wasn't going to get laughs or he knew he was going to bomb or get an awkward thing. And, and like, he, he anticipated things happening in a certain way. But it was almost – you're such a good dude, and you expected things to go that way, so you were prepared if the worst happened. Right. Yeah, you know, I, it, it's always too for me. I try to be organized, especially doing a lot of blogging and everything. So it's like you always have, like, a plan B and a C. So I even told my friends, I'm like, if, if they bomb, like, we'll go to plan B. I'm like, plan C? Plan D was just picking up my phone and calling my weird friends on the mm -hmm. phone and just having the audience listen to them. Oh, that's funny. But well, you, didn't yeah. have to res you didn't have to resort to that, did you? No, 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 no. I, I stuck with plan A, which was great. It's usually the best plan, because i got to tell you, if you got to plan D, that would have been a tough set to get through. <laughs> oh, I know. Well, the, the problem, too, is you never know going in, especially on a weeknight, what type of crowd you're going to get. So that, that was kind of my concern. Well, here, but here I'll, give you some, I'll give you some advice. You're going to go in, no matter what the crowd is, you've got to be committed to what you're doing. So yes. once you're up there, if you're into something, man, you've got you to gotta commit oh, to right, it. You, right. know? you still sell it and you go for it. But it's always harder, of course, when you're, you're into it and there's like a pin drop in the room. So, you know, but it went well. It was great. Good. There was a great turnout. So, you know, I it's think all New York about Comedy preparation, as well. preparation, preparation. Yeah, oh, it's so true. It really is. It's Unless so you're true. a dude like Mad Dog who just goes there and, like he says, he's playing jazz. He just goes in and does his thing. Yeah. You know, it's fun. You say that, and it's funny because comedians, there are a lot of comedians like yourself, and I, I'm, I'm kind of in the middle where you want to go in there and you prepare and you know exactly what you're going to say, exactly what you're going to do, and, you know, you give this time for laugh. And then there was the comedians like, you know, Mad Dog, and I think uh, Bill Hicks was like that, where they just kind of went in and, and did their thing, you know, and, and whatever happened, happened. The chips fell where they may, and it, it, that, that works for some people. Yeah, they're expert riffers. Yes. Yeah, that, that's what it is, really. They have that, that timing that they can think like that. But, too, you know, I used to teach, too, so I'm kind of used to that, like, improv type thing where you're not quite sure things could go a totally different way. So I think that definitely worked in my favor because there were times where you just kind of where I went off cuff a little bit, and it worked. You know, you just kind of fill your audience out and see what they're like, and it was a lot of fun. Well, speaking of uh, feeling your audience out, I have to admit, um, Neil actually called me last Monday night. He went up to Connecticut and did a radio <laughs> did a radio interview, and okay. he called me at like 9.30 in the morning, which is kind of anyone in the entertainment industry. I was like, this call must be important for him to call him at 9.30. Janet. Jan <laughs> but but, but oh, Neil, yes. Neil said, he goes, I really appreciate you guys at the comedy point and i go why is that and you know he just said that he went to connecticut and he did this whole big radio interview and he said he would he went in studio and he could not have felt more awkward in studio the guys didn't really make him feel at home they they didn't do their research they didn't do the homework on on his, him as far as a guest they thought he was involved in sex in the city and stuff like that and it's like 
How, how bad can you be? You have to do your homework. Even though you have a guest, you have to know something about them in order to ask good questions. And I sure. said, Neil, you might not have thought that you – and he was honest. He said he's not a delusional individual. Neil's a very good and he's aware of his surroundings and he knows when he does good. He knows when he does bad. But, he, but he's, I'm like, you, you cannot blame yourself for bombing. I'm like, that is equally their fault just as it is yours because they didn't lead you into good things. Sure. Neil, I'm going to tell you a little something about myself <laughs> and Joel. <laughs> <laughs> we're, a, we're radio personalities. I don't know if, if we've made that clear. I know they said it several times on the air, but I think I think you going into an unprofessional studio like that now you now you see what I'm talking about. This isn't easy. Oh, that, definitely, people, definitely. People think waking up at people think waking up at four o'clock in the afternoon and running up here to do a six o'clock show <laughs> is easy. <laughs> but but Neil, tell us a little bit about that. What happened? Okay, I won't name the radio station as per my wonderful publicist, Renee, told me. But I will tell you, here, here's my plug. If you go to my blog, neilb.tv, that's www.nealb.tv, you will find the exact uh, radio station. But apparently they reach, like, millions of people all over the place, all over the world. But when I got there, they did not do their research. They had a full bio of me, and I think they literally just looked at the first word they saw, and they said, well, you know what? That's pretty good for us, so we're just going to say that's what you do. Um, and it, it was just very, very awkward. They really didn't explain a lot of uh, what they were going to do. And it, it and one of I, I mean, it's just weird when you have another person in the room who's advertising the sunglass hut where they work. Like, you know, it's just it, it was just crazy. It was just so surreal compared to you guys who are so professional. You do your homework. You're funny. And they I just felt they were trying too hard to be funny and just not really, you know, it, it should come natural or it should feel natural. And I felt they were trying too hard. No, absolutely. I completely agree. Now you have something. You might have something big coming up later in the week, but um, we weren't. We aren't going to talk about that. Hopefully, you can call in next week and let us know what how that went. But what Definitely. else? What else do you have coming up? Because I want you to come perform on one of my shows in Hoboken. Um, what, what's your next show that's coming up, Neil? Well, I'm actually at East Hill Comedy Club tonight, and okay. then I'm doing a few other things. Um, and actually, the last time I spoke to you, I was trying to get Kathy Griffin to come on to um, the Sex and the City tour, which, again, I don't work for, but they wanted to, in collaboration with them, help me to try to get her on the tour. And the nice thing is, we, again, we have touched out with our publicists and people, but the cool thing was I actually got to meet her on the SVU set, which was, like, amazing in itself. So that was really cool. Cool, man. Well, absolutely. Well, uh, give people uh, your blog, your uh, blog website, one more time, and we're gonna let you go. We want you to call in and let us know how your set tonight went. Sure, awesome. It's again www.neilb.tv. That's N-E-A-L-B. TV. And again, guys, seriously, I love listening to you guys. I think before when I was listening about West Virginia and different things, I would have bombed that. So I'm so happy I didn't, I didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were all guessing. It was a 50-50 chance on every one. So. <laughs> I know. I know. So I noticed. So I noticed. But, but you, you guys are pretty good with that. But, you know, you guys are awesome. I love to always come and listen to you guys. So have a great rest of the night and have fun, guys. All right, Neil. Oh, take care, man. Thanks, Have a good Neil. show tonight. Bye, Neil. Good do okay, it. Fun. Take it easy. Bye. I like that dude. I just like his whole vibe. Man, he's just he's uh, just like Jan, and he's very positive, man. And no matter what you talk about, I mean, for him to call me and tell me how bad it went in Connecticut, I know it had to be super bad for him to even say one bad thing about right, it. Right, right. But well, he blamed it on himself. He actually said he bombed, and I'm like, no, you can't look at it like that, man. I mean, well, it's a combination. It's like and it, it's like everything else. You know, you got you take what's given to you. Sometimes you're not given a lot, and you know you got to make do with it. And, and Sometimes you just can't, you know. Yeah. You know, we're, where was he performing? Uh, with, uh, well, no, no, this was actually in studio on a uh, Connecticut oh, radio station. Radio. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, doing so. exactly. He he was on a show doing exactly what you're doing right now. Oh, okay. But he wasn't having the fun yeah. that you're having right now. <laughs> yeah, he didn't get pizza before after. I got well, Joe, I just want to really congratulate happy. you before we go to break. Another comedy career launched by Soul Joe Productions. Yep. Another one. Yeah, yep. absolutely. And I'm glad that he called me and had me mentor him and stuff like that. But you're listening to the Comedy Point with Soul Joe. We'll be right back with Jim Payne.